Stevens. In the IT department here, along with representatives from Bedrock, uh, we had asked several additional questions and we asked for additional information. We did receive that yesterday, uh, but most council members have not had an opportunity to fully go through that documentation yet. Uh, once we do that, uh, absent any additional questions, which there may be, uh, we'll, introduce, or we'll bring this back for a final vote within the next uh, few weeks. Anyone else on the question? All those in favor of tabling agenda item 7A signify by saying aye. 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 <clears throat> Opposed? The ayes have it and item 7A is tabled. Please dispense with the reading of the minutes. Third order, 3A, minutes of the Scranton Firefighters Pension Commission meeting held September 15, 2021. 3B, minutes of the non-uniform Municipal Pension Board meeting held September 15, 2021. 3C, agenda for the non-uniform Municipal Pension Board meeting held October 20, 2021. 3D, minutes of the Scranton Police Pension Commission meeting held September 15, 2021. 3E, minutes of the Composite Pension Board meeting held September 15, 2021. 3F, minutes of the Ethics Board meeting held July 21, 2021. 3G, correspondence received from the Department of Licensing, Inspections and Permits dated October 19, 2021. <laughs> 3H, correspondence received from Scranton Police Department and City Engineer regarding removal of stop sign at Wyoming Avenue and Sunset Street. Are there any comments on any of the third order items? If not received and filed, do any council members have any announcements at this time? I have a quick one. Uh, so this Sunday, October 31st, from 3 to 6 p.m., uh, 3 to 6 p.m., Shamrock Construction Incorporated will be hosting the fifth annual Trick or Treat on West Scranton's Main Avenue. Um, this is the fifth year in a row, uh, with many West Scranton businesses will be handing out Halloween treats to the children of Scranton. Save free family fun, where participating businesses from the 400 block of South Main to the 500 block of uh, North Main in West Scranton and at Allen Park on the corner of Main Avenue and Price. Wednesday, like I said earlier, Sunday, October 31st, 6, 3 to 6, and parents, all you need to do is show up with your kids in a costume and bring a bag. Um, that is all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, yes, I just wanted to mention uh, over the weekend, uh, this past weekend on Saturday, uh, the, the University of Scranton, along with other partners, had hosted a walk along uh, Lackawanna Avenue. Um, they've been doing a series of uh, events to honor Jane Jacobs, and um, she was someone who was adamantly opposed to the Steamtown Mall when, um, when it was built. Uh, but um, former uh, mayor and, and councilman Wayne Evans had uh, um, had given us the, the tour along Lackawanna Avenue and given us a lot of insight into the history there uh, and uh, some some hopes and vision for the for the future of downtown and uh, I really appreciated attending that as a council member uh, I felt it was was really helpful and I was able to learn some new things uh, about our city from it um, and the night before that, I had done the uh, Lackawanna Historical Association's haunted walking tour. So I learned about our, our ghost downtown as, as well. So um, it's, uh, it's just great that, uh, that we offer uh, those sort of things in our, in our city and give people the opportunity to learn about our history. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, I just want to take a second and recognize four employees of the city who recently uh, either retired or are retiring this week. Um, they are John Heenahan. John is a uh, DPW worker, 37 years of service to the city. I know John personally. He's a gentleman, uh, dedicated city employee, and uh, he will be missed uh, greatly by the DPW. Uh, Perry Brunori, uh, he retired after 25 years of service. Uh, he was a maintenance man in this building. Uh, I got to know him well over the last eight years. Again, nothing but a gentleman and a great asset uh, to the city of Scranton. He'll be missed. Uh, Patty Brower, I also know her, worked with her uh, years ago, 24 years of service. Uh, another great asset to the city, somebody who cared deeply about uh, her work, and uh, I wish her the best in her retirement. 
And uh, finally, Sally Locker, 23 years of service to the city. Uh, Sally worked in the law department. She was literally the glue that held the law department and the city together, in my opinion, uh, for many years. One of the hardest, most dedicated employees in the city of Scranton. She truly cared about the city, she truly cared about her work. And she worked extremely, extremely close with our office, uh, the city council office. So I want to wish her the best of luck and health in her retirement and thank all of these employees for their dedicated years of service. Mr. Volenberg. Fourth order, citizens participation. Thank you. The first speaker tonight is Joan Hodewanitz. Joan Hodewanitz, city resident. Um, next Tuesday is election day, and I hope everyone is going to exercise their right to vote. They say it's the right to vote. I think it's also a duty to vote, uh, whether you vote in person, <clears throat> by absentee ballot, or mail-in ballot. Sometimes it seems that those who complain the most and the loudest about poor governance are those who are most reluctant to take the time to vote or even to perform a simple civic duty like jury duty. So please, everybody, if you're registered, get out and vote. If you're not registered, get registered for the primary next spring. Uh, as I sat in the caucus, you gave me the feedback on the status of the audit, namely that it's not ready and in three weeks you will be introducing the 2022 operational budget. Um, again and again, year after year, we have a situation in which the budget is prepared without benefit of a prior audit. That can't continue, or if it's going to continue, you're just going to continue to have financial problems. So hopefully we'll get beyond that. I think one of the reasons that occurs is because you have elements, reportable entities for the budget that operate on a different fiscal year. And somehow everybody needs to be on the same fiscal year or that's gonna continue indefinitely. Uh, and you also mentioned that there will be upcoming caucuses in which the department heads will come in probably one by one to answer questions about their portion of the upcoming budget. I will be particularly interested in hearing what the IT department has to say because that one I think needs the most help. Um, I, hopefully you were all pleasantly surprised by the fact that the Scranton School District is looking at adopting the payroll tax in lieu of the business and mercantile tax. I think that's a major step forward for the city long term. And though there may be some initial pain in the conversion, I think that was the best decision to make. I'm happy about that. Let's see. And I'm also very pleased seeing uh, several weeks now LIPS providing a detailed list of various properties and actions with regard to them in terms of violations and statuses and what's going on with these. I think that should continue so that the general public knows what's going on in its various departments. And that's about it for tonight. I hope everyone does get out and vote. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Les Spindler. Me and Council Les Spindler, city resident, homeowner, taxpayer. First off, I want to say it was great that President Biden made a visit to our city last week. I thought it was great for the city. I just regret that I couldn't have met him and had a picture taken with him. I guess I didn't know the right people. <laughs> Would have loved to have shown my granddaughter when she grows up that I met the president. That didn't happen. Anyway, I'm glad he was here. I hope he comes back soon. Uh, been a while since I was here. The last time I was here, I talked about the corner I live on, that the blacktop they used as a curb on my corner, 
Someone washed away, and when it rains like it did today, my sidewalks get flooded. And so far, there's nothing been done. And uh, that's another thing. Like, why is it you're not allowed to have con- or, uh, blacktop sidewalks in this city, but in a lot of trip park, they're blacktop curbs? There's no concrete curbs in, in trip park. For most of it, I would I know where I live, in Hawthorne Street. And, I know Councilman Schuster can attest to that. We shouldn't have blacktop curbs. They wear away. But, so I hope something can be done about that. There's uh, many blocks in Trip Park that are like that. Uh, another thing about blacktop. Finally, those three or four blocks of wet on Main Avenue were paved, and they did a great job except for a few things. Some of the manhole covers, they didn't bring up to meet the pavement. And when you hit those manhole covers, it's like hitting a pothole. Thank God that didn't happen to me, but some people came up to me and told me that they, they hit those manhole covers. And, and like I said, it's a, it could knock your front end out of the line or do more than that. So, I, so I, whoever did the blacktop and dropped the ball there. Uh, next thing. Uh, what I'm going to say is not taking the shots at firefighters. Every firefighter that knows me knows I support them fully. But why are we paying firefighters overtime to watch people at the splash pad in the summertime? When the first day it opened, I was there for the ribbon cutting. I spoke to Business Administrator West, and there was a young lady there with a Red Cross shirt on, and he said that's what they were going to have. You don't need a lifeguard. All you need somebody there is like to, to maybe do CPR if there was needed. But why are we paying firefighters to do that? Like I said, I, I respect firefighters. That I've, I've supported them for as long as I've been coming to these meetings. But I think that's a mistake to do that, and it's costing the city money. So I hope that's something that could be changed next summer. And lastly, 7C. I wasn't here when that was introduced, and I hear tonight's the last reading. I hope you could not vote on that tonight. And, uh, I think you're hurting bars by passing that. Like, every so often I'll go to stage west of West Granton on Main Avenue. It's on Main Avenue, not a residential area. How are they harming people by having a band there? To me, it doesn't make sense. You're, you're hurting that business. That's probably how they make most of their business when they have entertainment <coughs> like that and many other bars in the city. So why you would even consider this ordinance is beyond me. We want businesses to stay in this city and make money. <coughs> Not You're eventually going to close businesses down by doing this. And I think it's a mistake, and I hope you can reconsider this ordinance. And uh, that's all I have tonight. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. Next speaker is Ron Elman. <clears throat> Hello, Council. I told Brother Bill before the meeting, I, my absent wasn't to punish anybody. A cat bit me. And you can't imagine how bad this could be. I've been in the hospital and I had blood poisoning. It's unbelievable. And it's, I want to say that I was at Guy Singers for a week and they treated me like a king. I just can't get over the, it, the way that hospitals run is managed is just perfect as far as I'm concerned. And I didn't do nothing to the cat, if somebody asked. All right. A presidential visit has to be a rarity for any community. I wrote this about an hour ago, so don't get mad at me. A mayor's supposed to represent every single being in that community, regardless of their political affiliation. Of course, in Scranton, that doesn't mean nothing. Not only did this mayor deceive us 
as being an independent in actuality, she is an extreme leftist liberal, judging by her actions in office so far. To turn her back on President Trump's visit, show this mayor's total absence of political acceptance, political knowledge, understanding, and charisma needed in politics. To me, it was a show of no character whatsoever. That's just my opinion of, of this action. It was a display of ignorance that wasn't necessary. She should have been down there with other people when the President of the United States comes. Scranton is in dire need of good government. Do not allow this coming election become one of personalities, black against white, or personal beliefs, and especially don't allow a poor candidate again to buy an election with her outside money, as stated in the past. Sunday's editorial gloating about how well she's done in office is just leftist newspaper praising a leftist person and demeaning Mr. Shaw about not being educated for the position. She had no education for the position when she took office, you know. She neither did so many others that have gotten office. Last month in August, rather, my house insurance went up $16 a month. $16 a month, you know why? I'm gonna tell you. Because my house is insured for more than my neighborhood would bring now. It wasn't this way two years ago. My neighborhood has gone downhill so drastically. I got two blocks from my house behind the house. It's a junkyard full of broken down trucks, six, eight, ten trucks back there and a boat. Right almost in my backyard, less than 100 feet on Troop Street, the same thing. Man got a bunch of scrap and broken down cars behind his house. Next door is the guy that lives in the uh, school bus for two years. I've complained. He's still there. The house is condemned. It looks, you know, you people just don't care about the city no more. This is senseless. You talk about rate. My taxes are three times what they were when I bought the house. How much higher do you need taxes? Well, I appreciate you letting me talk tonight. It's my opinion. I think, I think we could certainly use a new mayor. And I, I don't know any more about Mr. Shaw than I've read in the paper, but he can't be worse than what we got. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> that, ex that exhausts the uh, sign-in sheet tonight. Would anyone else in the audience like to address council? Tom Coyne, Manuka. Looking at the Home Rule Charter, just as an odd point of reference. When trying to change a home rule charter for the people, it's quite interesting that in times of distress or aggravation for the population, in times when the citizens would want to make those changes, the bar becomes higher for those citizens to actually make that change because written into the Home Rule Charter is, it's based upon the votes from the mayoral election prior, which in times of discord, when people are most unhappy about their government, that's the time when they go out and they vote the most. They vote the hardest and they put 
they bring that conflict to the voting booth. It seems against common sense that by coming out and saying there's a problem and we need a change, that actually raises the bar to make changes even harder. Because in times, of, times when there is no discord and the vote is low, it's easier to make changes. But suddenly when there's problems, it's more difficult just by the rules there that the document is bound by. And that's neither here nor there. I just found that as an interesting insight that the more changes needed, the more difficult it is under this document to actually make those changes. Moving on to, uh, I wondered about the COVID vaccination rates uh, for the city police and fire department. And I understand you probably don't have information back yet. But the city of Philadelphia actually came back with their numbers. And I think that might key in why a number of city or cities and municipalities are not willing to disclose or mandate vaccination rates. In Philadelphia, the city in the, for the city police department of Philadelphia, 13% of police are vaccinated against COVID. In the city of Philadelphia, 23% of firemen are vaccinated against COVID. If the city of Scranton or Philadelphia made it mandatory that you had to have vaccination against COVID, they would have 87% of their police force removed from service. So I suspect somewhere underneath all of this, uh, choosing whether or not to enforce a mandatory uh, vaccination probably is the numbers would devastate the police and fire department just by the sheer size of it to the IT budget that was put aside I don't understand why some of it is put under under special services I believe that the IT budget all of the IT budget should be put under the IT budget to hide it in different departments, in different sections, is convoluted. It hides transparency and allows money to be moved around from department to department with no oversight. It is a shell game and it should not be allowed. If this is an IT budget, it shouldn't be under services. If you want a contract with Bedrock, that should be under the IT. It should not be under services. And as of the IT budget, why are we spending millions of dollars for Jessup and outside of this community? Why don't we spend it on our own people? Why do we constantly outsource city funds and taxes outside the community rather than to our own people? We wonder why our tax base is low, why we're not getting any income. That's because contractors aren't hired from in the community because somehow only outside the community is valuable for resources. And I don't understand why we continually push city taxpayers funds outside of the grasp of our local community. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Would anyone else like to address council? Good evening, council. Dave Dobson, resident. You know, hear an awful lot about taxation and yeah, 36% uh, of our city is tax exempt. And some people do a lot of good things and some people, okay, just the tax exempt. Years ago, there was a coal mining operation that was KOZ down in the lower west side along the railroad tracks. I mean, what the purpose of that was, being KOZ, I don't know. But at any rate, years ago, and I, I'm sure this goes back to uh, the Evans Council, Janet Evans Council, I recommended that we should be going after the state. It's the state constitution. We have to accept tax exemptions. 
and uh, as long as they fit within the uh, parameters. And it's, uh, you know, it just never seems to end. A few weeks ago I mentioned about the uh, Prescott Avenue falling to a tax exempt, probably a whole city block. Eventually our former interim mayor, his, uh, his real estate company is handling that. And I was really kind of distressed when I read the article last summer, you people were on, uh, on your summer break and uh, the uh, school district was not part of that suit to start to equalize according, they're supposed to subsidize according to the uh, wealth base of the population and uh, we have an ungodly amount of people that are under the poverty line or just barely treading water. So I would hope someday that we would get after the state and try to uh, try to get our just compensation out of them. Because uh, the only other answer is to have people in here complaining week in and week out that their taxes are going up and up and up. And uh, it's probably not working for everybody. We have a lot of people losing houses. Uh, on the COVID, got some good news tonight. We're only losing 1,400 people a day. And, uh, you know, we have the anti-vax and anti-mask people. Uh, as of today, isn't today the 26th of, well, I qualify for a booster shot and I have some news for you. I'll take two, they're small. You know, so get out and get vaccinated, people. That's utter stupidity. You would never want to, people begging to take the vaccination while they're being intubated in a hospital and told that they're not gonna make it very long. So, I mean, how could you be so dumb? And, uh, let's see. Two weeks ago, I mentioned about changing the home rule charter, and I, I don't know if I really support that because in the current political activity and opinions, it, it might be problematic, anything that we'd come up with. You know, uh, these changes aren't, uh, aren't necessarily good for the good. Uh, a lot of times people have their own underlying uh, agenda and they interject them and the average person, that's one of the things about voting. Please vote informed. Start following what people are up to or doing or what the good they're doing or the bad they're doing and uh, you know, it would be a horrible shame to uh, change it and have things only turn out for the worst. And uh, I caught that on 7C. I didn't really understand it. Had some car trouble, so it was hard to show up. Uh, but, you know, I started playing guitar or taking lessons at uh, 12 years old. And it's no longer worth showing up at many of these bars. I'm sorry, I'm out of time. But there's only so much you can harass them Tell people, I sit up in my music room and play almost every night. But I have no interest in going to a bar and getting asked to take $15 from the bartender for the whole night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Would anyone else <coughs> in the audience like to address council this evening? <coughs>
Good evening, City Council. Carla Waltman, Scranton resident. Hopefully each of you board members took the time to read the email that I wrote to Chairman of the Zoning Board Hearing, or Zoning Hearing Board, Robert Gattins, of which I included all of you as a CC copy. The email addressed and explained the very reasons you should not be approving resolution, resolution 7C so that the bars can disturb the Scranton neighborhoods. In addition to the stated reasons in the email, consider the thousands of residents that work different shifts or have school-aged children and or infants that are sleeping during the times that the bars want to blast music. Please do not forget about all the residents just because a dozen bar owners contacted City Council. I hope you've consulted the mayor, the zoning board, and 911 and informed them of your intentions. This resolution will have a direct impact on their offices with complaints from angry neighbors. The state of PA no longer has a mask mandate or social distancing requirements as of June 28, 2001. The PA Liquor, Con board, Liquor Control Board ended temporary extensions of outdoor servicing areas around the same time. My family and the neighbors near Backstreet Tiki Bar are first-hand witnesses to the lack of enforcement by the Scranton Police for noise violations due to loudspeakers and live entertainment. The police were called for the better part of 2020 and nothing changed until the Pennsylvania State Liquor Control Enforcement stepped in and warned the bar about loud music. The bar owner ignored the warnings and was eventually cited. Even the bar owners, the bar owner ignoring the citing, and he now has at least six noise violations, as per my husband's conversation with the liquor control enforcement officers. Also stated in the email to Robert Gattins was the fact that when the Scranton police showed up at our house because we were complaining about the music, we were told that they can't enforce the Scranton noise ordinance because a violation would not hold up in court because they don't have a calibrated sound level meter. Since no calibrated sound level meter is present within the Scranton police office, then no loud music violations will ever be made. You need to have written confirmation, not verbal, because they'll tell you anything you want to hear, that a calibrated sound level meter is available at the Scranton police officer office. You need to have written confirmation, not verbal, of the names of the officers that have received training. You need to have written confirmation, not verbal, of the date it was purchased and the serial number of the level meter owned by the Scranton police. As I stated before, a calibrated sound level meter does not exist, as per the numerous officers and a supervisor that showed up at our house. Scranton Chapter 317 Noise has a definition for noise disturbance, property boundary, boundary, real property, sound level meter, zoning districts. It also contains 317-7 prohibited acts, A, 1 in parentheses, A in parentheses. The prohibited acts requirement is exactly the same as the PA Liquor Control Board's requirement that, no, that noise does not cross a disturbance, cause a disturbance across a real property boundary. 317-7 prohibited acts aid in parentheses four, loudspeaker public address systems is exactly the same as the PA liquor control requirement that noise does not cause a disturbance across a real property boundary. 317-8 sound level limits, and these are all in the paperwork that you have online. <coughs> the sound level limits by receiving land use slash district 10 feet inside a lot in a residential district, Monday through Saturday until 9 p.m., excluding, excluding major holidays, is 69 decibels. The paper that I just gave you has 70 decibels as a dishwasher. That's what 70 decibels is. My house is about 225 feet away from his property. By law, I should not be able to hear a dishwasher from that distance. 
from 7 p.m. from I'm sorry, from 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. all day Sunday and all major holidays. The sound decibel requirement is 64, Thank you. which is between an air conditioner and a dishwasher. Ma'am, I'm sorry, I don't want to interrupt you, but your time is up. Okay. Thank you. Well, I'm against 7C. Okay, thank you very much. Would anyone else like to address council? Yes. Thank you. Just please state your name for the record. John Waltman, resident of the city of Scranton. Um, Carla's husband. We have called numerous times, probably in excess of 40 times last year, noise, noise issues with Backstreet Tiki Bar. No citations were issued by the, the uh, Scranton police. They were all ignored. Various reasons given, some of them absurd. Citations were issued by Liquor Control Enforcement. They were listening to the same issues. They found reason to cite and then later fine. I got reasons why they weren't going to do it. You know, I was told by one officer, doesn't sound loud to me, maybe you need to turn your television up. Another officer tells me, well, it's his birthday. He's celebrating his 50th birthday tonight. I read it on Facebook. I don't get any enforcement on that. It's loud. The most popular reason was we don't have a sound level meter. Now with all due respect to the police chief, if he can't enforce it when I'm calling and there is an issue that exists, I'm being told he can't enforce it, he doesn't have a sound meter. How is it enforced in other areas of the city? Is it being enforced in other areas of the city? I'm sorry, we, uh, were you posing that question to us? We were told by the police department that it was being enforced um, and that they, the uh, correspondence that they had with our solicitor, Kevin Hayes, was that the uh, chief of police said that they could take the enforcement on. So that's what we were being told. I, I have to disagree with it. He, he's, his officers have told me they can't enforce it without a sound meter. If they were enforcing it, he wouldn't have got citations from liquor control. He'd have already been quieted down. There's, there's no enforcement from my perspective. It may be enforced in other areas of the city, but it's not enforced when I call. I, I don't know if there's anything going on there, but I don't get any satisfaction with it. I'm not the only one in the neighborhood complaining, just not showing up. Thank you. Would anyone else like to address council? Mr. Bullenberg? Fifth order, 5A motions. <coughs> Councilman Schuster, any motions or comments tonight? Um, I guess just three, um, three citizen complaints. I, I had a complaint from 1800 Cedar Avenue. Um, I had a complaint of 1608, 1610 Hawthorne Street. The bushes are overgrown. Um, on Cedar Ave, there was garbage and rodents. And then uh, I got another complaint from 1434, 1436 Dorothy Street, um, where the neighbors are getting uh, cockroaches in their homes from a, another resident. Um, so I'll, I'll follow up after the meeting with you, Frank, about that. Um, last week I asked about the personnel report. It, it, we asked several times about a personnel report. Was there any um, news or update on a personnel report? No, Mr. Schuster, we sent out a second request a few All days right. ago. All right, thank you very much. I know we had a resignation this week and we had some retirements that Mr. Gahan spoke of. And then we also got some job descriptions um, in our email, so it's still on my mind. So uh, hopefully we'll get a response from that. But that's all. Thank you. Councilman McCandrew, any motions or comments tonight? Yeah, I have a few. So last week, um, it was brought to my attention by some concerned residents about the, this repair of the hometown hero banners that were rolled out in West Scranton last May. So, um, Mr. Voldenberg, thank you, he reached out to Todd Polsey of NeighborWorks. He responded to me very quickly uh, Friday, and I would like to report out our, our conversation. So, uh, as we discussed on the phone, repairing existing banners, okay, so NeighborWorks will be hiring Jaworskis to properly hang any of the 30 existing banners that have fallen down or come loose. These are the ones that were piloted. Uh, I expect that they will be able to be, uh, to be done soon. 
uh, but not may may not happen before Veterans Day. I, well, I hope they I hope they are. And, and this stems from a hardware issue more than anything. So that has been identified and will be corrected. So hang of new banners because people are inquiring about them because they were put on a list. So we also plan on to hang 145 new banners. This will be a total of 175 banners along Main Avenue. And if we run out of room, uh, Luzerne Street. We'll reach, we'll reach out to everyone on our existing waiting list to give them the opportunity to purchase a banner. If anyone would like to add to the waiting list, please contact our office, meaning NeighborWorks, at 570-558-2490. And then the replacement of banners. So two years from now, we'll take down the 175. That includes the, the piloted ones. Return them to the families who purchased them and then take new applications for the banners to replace them. So I hope this satisfies uh, concerns and questions. And also, so uh, I got a little disturbing inquiry or, or, or concerns brought to, brought to my attention the other day. So during COVID, um, you know, the past 18 months, there were some emergency purchases that, you know, of course were reimbursed, but, but th these were for two gas powered, very expensive gas fired commercial power washers for cleaning and sanitizing, which was great. Um, but I'm hearing right now that one of them is missing or gone missing. So, you know, I hope it's a rumor, but um, Mr. Voldenberg, could you please send some correspondence to the DPW uh, and, s and s ask if they're still in possession of said power washers? And there should be an easy request that should be satisfied. I'd like to know by the end of the week, please. I'll take care of it, sir. Thank you. And I just want to touch base just back on um, the issues in Bellevue with the trucks. We, we talked about it for a few weeks, and, and, and you know, I think we got some movement. But there was one more question uh, posed to me that I, I'm sure it can be clarified, answered in this room, but I, I promised I would ask it. So we all know that um, the officer who was certified to weigh the trucks and, and issue citations retired, which is wonderful for him, and we thank him for all his hard work. But the question posed to me was, now that he's retired, will someone in his absence show up at the magistrate's office uh, when, when, you know, when, when this takes place? And I'm sure that it does, but does it? Yes, I followed up with the chief, and he said someone would attend the magistrate hearings. Well, thank you. I'm sure that was it, but I just want clarification. And then uh, what else do we have here? So actually this afternoon when I was walking in the hall to, to come here, um, I was stopped by two very nice residents that didn't, didn't want to speak at the meeting, and, and that's okay. I said I would speak on their behalf, but um, there's an issue on 822 Kapaus Avenue. It's a second floor apartment that's vacant, and there's a lot of homeless people going in and out. There's all kinds of noise. They're lighting tiki torches on the upper, upstairs back porch. They're hanging on the porch. Uh, you know, they're violating open container uh, uh, issues. And then on the corner of Newton Kapaus, there's also an issue, which is very close to this, in proximity of this, this uh, address, that another, again, some open container issues and selling drugs. So after I spoke to these people, I promised I'd bring it up in fifth order, but I did uh, have a conversation with Mr. Voldenberg before the meeting. And you, you, he told me that, you know, these complaints are filed, that, that the police are looking into it, and there, there's action being taken. That's correct, sir. So I, I hope that, uh, you know, these two nice residents hear, hear about that tonight. They said they'd watch the meeting. Um, let's see here. So I have one more. So I've been asking. And I inquired last week. I have, I've been inquiring for a year about this this um, illegal service station activity is going on the rear of 1149th Street. So I asked a week ago, and we haven't heard back yet, right, Mr. Foldenberg? No, we haven't, sir. All right, so this is going on uh, over a year. So I get a call Friday from a neighbor over there saying, you know, it's still going on. There, there's cars parked the wrong way. The garage doors are open. They're painting, um, you know, which is, which is horrible because of the, how dangerous it is. And I did reach out to the police, the police department. They sent someone over, which, which 
all their, all their responsibility, all they can do is just ticket the vehicles that are parked the wrong way or that aren't have proper registrations. But in order to stop this, uh, you know, this illegal service uh, garage, you know, my understanding, and as I've been told all along, it's, it's a code enforcement issue. They have the power to go in. The police can't walk inside this garage. So I've been asking about this property. I don't see it on the summary that we, that we keep getting, you know, every other month, which is great. But I remember last year, you know, there were so many um, citations issued that they'd be charged $500 a day if this continues. So guess what? It's continuing. So I, want, I, want to, I really want to follow up on this because um, I've, I've, I haven't gotten anything back from code enforcement within the past two weeks, or even I brought this up a month ago. So please follow up with this, Mr. Voldemort. I will. And that is all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Rothschild, any motions or comments tonight? Um, I was going to ask about the, uh, the personnel reports that we had requested as well, but uh, Councilman Schuster had beat me to the punch there. Um, the other thing I wanted to bring up, because I know over the weekend there were uh, some residents that were uh, complaining about uh, 609 Prescott Avenue, which uh, is terribly overgrown and um, the, the house is in pretty bad shape uh, and it has been for some time now. Um, and we had received an update uh, from LIPS uh, that'll be in, in third order next week and uh, that property was listed on there. And uh, back in June, uh, there was a violation filed with the magistrate, but they still haven't received a trial date. And I know that's been problematic for a lot of properties, uh, this, the same issue that um, it ends up being held up at, um, at the magistrate and they don't, they don't get a hearing date or, or hearing dates get changed or, or pushed back and, um, and then the issues don't get resolved. And before we know it, it's winter time um, and then there's snow removal issues. So um, I will, uh, keep uh, pushing on that to see if we can get a hearing date uh, to at least get that, that property resolved. And then in my uh, meeting with Director Cipriani last week, uh, we did uh, discuss this, this list uh, that, that she's been sending us with, uh, with the updates, which has been helpful for, I believe, council and the public, uh, but it is getting to uh, be a lengthy um, amount at this point, uh, so sh she'll work on clearing out any of the ones that uh, that have been resolved that we don't still need on the list. Um, and uh, then we, we did discuss as well uh, the progress with OpenGov, and um, I, I think it's going to be a very useful tool for council because we'll have the ability to go in there and see what steps have been taken on these problem properties uh, to, to update citizens uh, when we're receiving complaints. That's all that I have. Thank you. Councilman Donahue, any motions or comments? <clears throat> uh, yeah, just briefly, uh, I was going to bring up the fact that the Electric City sign has been not lit for the past week or so, but I was happy to see today that uh, Fidelity Bank has agreed to pay the electric bill so that the Electric City sign could be relit. Um, so I just want to thank uh, Dan Santanello and Fidelity Bank for stepping up to the plate on that issue. Um, in terms of uh, the transition to payroll prep, um, I'm a little concerned that we're starting to fall behind the eight ball in making that transition. Um, there was supposed to be uh, legal services for appeals processes <clears throat> and then also a bid put out for uh, a collector of the payroll prep tax. That's not something that we could just do on the back end. It has to be done before we even think about implementing that is get those processes in place. So I am concerned and I urge the administration to get on that as quickly as possible because we can't wait any longer. Um, you know, we're coming up on two months. We can't just switch a tax and then not have a collector and not have, you know, a process that goes with it. So I am concerned about that. Um, also, uh, Ms. Hodawan, it's brought up the audit again, and it, it really is unacceptable that we get to the end of October every year um, and not have the audit in hand as we move into budget season. Um, at this point, we're just going to have to relook look at the contract and hopefully when we put it back out to bid, have specific dates of when this stuff needs to be done on both ends, because I don't know 
when you when when you ask questions about it, the auditor blames someone else, and then someone else blames the auditor. So it's we really do have to get that straightened out. Um, also, lastly, I got a question. Um, a resident saw a RFQ uh, regarding Connell Park, and it was for community-based organizations for the use of the space that is known as Connell Park. Um, Mr. Voldemort, will you be able to check with the parks director and see what this actually means? Um, it is a public park, so community-based organizations should be able to use it as they see fit. Um, so could you just check and see what that's all about? And that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Thank you. I had received a letter from a woman in the 3200 block of Powell Court. Um, the woman was uh, concerned about <laughs> flooding in the 3200 block of Powell Court, which is uh, adjacent to Bernie Avenue. Um, 50 years of devastating flooding, 50 years of uh, pleas for help unheeded, uh, garages inundated with water, yard, flooded back porch, sewer water spewing through uh, house drains, and uh, no help at all from any city officials. This woman provided me with a folder going back to the 1970s uh, wherein there is correspondence between um, the Scranton Sewer Authority and uh, Mayor Jean Peters. Um, so this has been an issue that has gone on for over 50 years. So uh, I will ask Mr. Voldenberg to uh, follow up on it to see if we can help that woman and find out what's <coughs> going on there. Um, the second thing I wanted to mention, I agree with Councilman Dunahue on the audit. We did receive another update from Kohansky and Company. Uh, they stated that most of the financial statement audit is complete and, and under review. However, the audits of the Redevelopment Authority and the Sewer Authority remain outstanding. They received the schedule of expenditures of federal awards on October 13th and returned it to OECD and the Business Office for questions related to missing information and awards. They believe that they have all the information now and they're expecting to start the compliance audit this week. Regarding the Portnoff Law Associates collections, I think Ms. Schumacher asked about this last week. Mary Jo Sheridan, the city treasurer, will provide a monthly report each month end for the Portnoff Law Associates collections. The amended resolution uh, we adopted at our September 21st council meeting, and the first report is expected uh, post month end October. So we should be getting that very soon. We also sent a request to DPW for repair and regular maintenance to the lookout on Route 307 on East Mountain. Um, we continue to ask questions about the Naog pool complex and an update to what the plan is. I don't quite understand the response that uh, they're waiting for the park study. We have already received the study and options on uh, what can be done or what should be done with the pool complex and a splash pad. I did have a chance yesterday to speak to the mayor about this and reiterated to her that um, I think we really need to get moving on this. Uh, time is of the essence, and I'm of the belief that we need to explore a capital borrowing, refinancing, a creative method uh, to fund that project. The longer that that sits vacant uh, with no pools, uh, the, the worse it is for the residents of uh, the Hill section and of our city as a whole. We continue to look for answers on the SAFER grant. We, uh, I pose questions and, and council agreed uh, to send correspondence to the mayor on September 23rd. We followed up with an, a more, another correspondence. We asked very pointed questions about the SAFER grant. I was told that there was a 30 day extension, but we cannot get anything in writing from the mayor or her administration. I'm really not sure what the holdup is, but as days go by, it does get concerning that uh, we don't seem to receive any response. Also, as Councilman Schuster and uh, Councilwoman Rothschild asked, we have asked for a monthly listing of employees and employee vacancies by city department. Again, another request that goes unheeded uh, and unanswered. I asked multiple times for a very simple request on employees currently on workman's comp and disability. Again, this is a report that can be printed out within minutes. No response. Again. Uh, at this point, it's getting to the point of being disturbing. Um, and there are several others uh, as well where we've asked for information and for some reason we cannot get a response. Um, we did send a, a request to the Scranton Police Department on October 26th for a, a status and resolution on an abandoned vehicle in the 400 block of Phelps Street. 
that was damaged in a severe rainstorm and flooding uh, in that area. We also continue to have an uh, opening on the city's ethics board. So if anyone in the public is interested, please send a resume and a letter of interest to Frank Voldenberg in the city clerk's office, or you can email it to fvoldenberg at scrantonpa.gov. That's all I have. Thank you. Five B for introduction an ordinance approving the intermunicipal transfer of a restaurant liquor license R one four six nine six currently owned by Michael A Mecca the second and located at two twenty four Erie Street Dunmore Lackawanna County Pennsylvania one eight five one zero to Galley Family Food Mart Inc the Food Mart located at eight zero one Cedar Avenue Scranton Lackawanna County Pennsylvania one eight five zero five as required by the pencil. Pennsylvania Liquor Control Board. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? <clears throat> on the question, um, we are going to have a public hearing on this matter on November 9th at 5.45 p.m. In, in council chambers, and that will be advertised in the newspaper. Anyone else on the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, and so moved. Sixth order, 6A, previously tabled. Reading by title, file of the council number 83, 2021, an ordinance, amending file of the council number 65, 2021, an ordinance entitled, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate officials of the city of Scranton to take all necessary actions to implement the HUD 2021 annual action plan for community planning and development programs to be funded under the Community Development Block Grant Program, Home Investment Partnership Program, and Emergency Solutions Grants Program for the period beginning January 1, 2021, by amending the 2021 Action Plan to add $350,000 under the Community Development Block Grant Revolving Loan Fund to assist new and existing businesses within the City of Scranton through the business loan to grant program previously allocated to Boys and Girls Club Park It program. You've heard, reading by You've heard reading by title of item 6A. What is your pleasure? Mr. Chairman, I move that item 6A pass reading by title. Second. On the question? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Yes, have it, and so moved. I make a motion to amend file of the council number 83 to 2021 as follows. In the summary title, in the fourth line, remove HUD 2021 annual action plan and insert consolidated submission. In the ninth line, after action plan, remove to add and insert by adding. In the last line, after the words grant program, remove previously allocated to Boys and Girls Club Park program. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion on the floor and a second to amend item 6A. On the question? On the question, um, and we'll have this for next week, the, we had uh, several questions about this piece. We had to table it for 30 days for a, a public comment period. But uh, the OECD director, Eileen Cipriani, provided um, information and answers to our questions. And we did put that in third order, I want to say, three or three meetings ago, so three weeks ago. Anyone else? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it <coughs> and so moved. Seventh order, 7A, for consideration by the Committee on Rules for adoption, file of the council number 88, 2021, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into a contract between the city of Scranton and Bedrock Technology AKA Keystone Technology Consulting LLC to provide information technology management services. Okay. And this piece has been tabled uh, this evening. 7B for consideration by the Committee on Rules for adoption, resolution number 227, 2021. Appointment of J. Conrad Bosley, 13 Leslie Drive, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18505 as a member of the Historical Architecture Review Board, effective September 20th, 2021. Mr. Bosley will be replacing Nello Boyle, who resigned effective August 17th, 2021. 
Mr. Bosley will fill the unexpired term of Ms. O'Boyle and will expire on October 11, 2024. As chairperson for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7B. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes, I hereby declare item 7B <coughs> legally and lawfully adopted. 7C, for consideration by the Committee on Rules, for adoption, file of the Council number 228, 2021. Resolution authorizing City of Scranton to seek exemption from Section 4-49334 of the Liquor Code. As Chairperson for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of Item 7C. Second. On the question. Um, on the question, I'd like to, I think there was some confusion tonight on what this legislation actually is. So I will ask uh, Solicitor Hayes now our attorney Hayes now, can you just take us through this legislation, what this does um, for the public? Um, yes, and I agree that there seemed to be some confusion uh, in the comments that were made. So what this would do is allow the uh, City of Scranton Police Department to be the sole ones to respond to noise complaints. It does not in any way change the Liquor Control Board's ability to respond to anything having to do with the licenses themselves, uh, but rather they would not respond to any issues involving noise complaints. Okay. Um, once City Council approves this tonight, it does not mean that it automatically goes into place. What would happen next is uh, more information would be forwarded to the Liquor Control Board, public hearings would be held, and then they would ultimately make the decision about whether or not uh, it's appropriate for the city of Scranton. Okay, thank you very much. Um, what we heard last week uh, from one of the, uh, the business owner from uh, Backstreet's uh, Tiki Bar, and this is what I thought didn't make sense, to be honest with you, was that they, uh, and I'm just singling them out because they were here last week, but this goes for other uh, bars throughout the city, that they were authorized by the zoning board to operate their bar until 9 p.m. on weekdays and 10 p.m. on Saturdays. So they're authorized by the city to do that. However, uh, they were getting fined by the, uh, by the PLCB. So they're authorized to do something if they're getting punished for doing it, which does not make sense. And one of the things that the city had relaxed the rules on a little bit uh, since the pandemic in order to help the businesses was to operate outside so that they could you know, operate in a safe manner uh, because of COVID. So that's one of the things that I really didn't understand. One of the things that, and one of the reasons why I'll be voting for this is because it was uh, explained to us uh, by Chief Nemeka that he believes that the city police department could adequately handle the noise complaints within the city without the involvement of the PLCB. Now, if there has to be some sort of a piece of equipment uh, that I'm not aware of that, uh, but we will look into that. And if that needs to be included in the 2022 budget uh, for the police department, we will inv we'll investigate that. Um, but this in no way, you know, gives free reign to business owners. It just makes it, I think, fair for business owners so that they are not getting um, in trouble and fined by the PLCB for doing something that they're authorized to do by the city. So you can't say on one hand they can do it and then on the other hand uh, they get fined. So that's why I'll be voting yes. <coughs> Anyone else on the question? I w yeah. yeah, I would just like to say that I was in the meeting with uh, both Attorney Hayes's uh, Assistant Solicitor Lafferty from the administration and both Chief, Chief Nemeka and uh, Lieutenant Mayo and they and it was came to the conclusion that they would be able to uh, to uh, handle these noise complaints on their own and again this is only a one year so it's a one year trial basis and then we would have to go and apply for it again in a year um, we also reached out to a couple of municipalities that have done this in the past couple of years to see what their experience was with it and their experience was positive. So that's why we're going to, you know, pass this tonight and then, you know, hopefully it goes, then it goes to the Liquor Control Board and then hopefully, you know, we'll see what this next year brings. 
Uh, on the question, I would like to add, I know uh, last week I um, voiced my support for this piece uh, and, and explained those reasons. However, I do, I do have reservations about the enforcement. Um, we've had, uh, we've seen issues with enforcing other ordinances, uh, like for fireworks, and uh, I wouldn't want to see the same thing happen with this piece here. And um, uh, you know, I wasn't aware of the lack of a calibrated sound level meter, but uh, if that's the case, I would like to ensure that the police department has um, what they need in order to uh, in, in order to enforce the noise ordinance. So, if we could um, request clarification if they have that meter, and if not, uh, what we need to do in order to uh, receive that and the the appropriate training for our officers. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Roll call, please. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes, I hereby declare item 7C legally and lawfully adopted. 7D, previously tabled, for consideration by the Committee on Community Development for adoption, resolution number 219-2021 accepting the recommendation of the Historic Architectural Review Board and denying the Certificate of Appropriateness for Robert Pollock, 724 Winola Road, Clark Summit, Pennsylvania, 18411, for partial demolition of the Plotkin Shoe Store at 301 <coughs> Penn Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18503. What is the recommendation of the Chairperson for the Committee on Community Development? As Chairperson for the Committee on Community Development, I recommend final passage of item 7D. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes. I hereby declare item 7D legally and lawfully adopted. Eighth order, nothing at this time. Thank you. If there's no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting's adjourned. Have a nice night. Thank you, everyone.